Uh, today we are going to learn about the suboccipital and the occipital area and what are the structures that lies deeper to it. I'm going to use a platform called 4D Anatomy. The link to this web-based platform is in the description below. This platform basically uses actual well-dissected cadaveric images uh, captured in a 3D format that enables you to virtually dissect through the layers and rotate it to get a 3D perspective. So here you are seeing the uh, posterior superficial muscles of the back. This is the trapezius, this is the rhomboids, all this have been discussed before. And over here, you can see the trapezius is reflected on the right side like a page. From the origin it is cut and reflected towards the insertion. And here you can see other muscles, more deeper muscles in the neck region. This muscle is the splenius capitis. And this is the levator scapulae. The levator scapulae and the splenius capitis, if you remember the posterior triangle floor muscles, in the upper part, you have levator scapulae, then you have splenius capitis. And this is the semispinalis capitis. And you remember in the posterior triangle floor muscles in the upper part, you had levator scapulae, splenius capitis, and semispinalis capitis. So these are the exact muscles, but you are looking not from the lateral aspect, but from the posterior aspect. So this is the uh, orientation of the splenius capitis. Splenius, the word uh, means bandage. So it is somewhat like a bandage that is bounding the uh, all the spinalis muscles uh, towards uh, the neck. So that is the splenius capitis and the lower fibers are called splenius services. So uh, if we take off the splenius capitis, you can see a uh, more clearer view of the semispinalis capitis. I want to go to the next layer to get an idea about that. This is semispinalis capitis. So suppose this, uh, now my hand is showing the semispinalis capitis, the splenius is like this. The bandage is going like this. So you will have only a little view of the semispinalis capitis if the splenius is intact. But if the splenius is removed, you can see the semispinalis capitis more clearly. So that is the, what we are doing here. The splenius is removed and you can see the semispinalis capitis here more clearly. Semispinalis is characteristically pierced by this nerve. This nerve is the greater occipital nerve. You can see it ramifying and supplying sensory supply to the uh, occipital area over here. That is the greater occipital nerve. So. Here you have the prominence, the external occipital protuberance, which I mentioned earlier uh, when I mentioned about the origin of the trapezius. This is a superior nuchal line and the ex external occipital protuberance. So actually the superior nuchal line and the external occipital protuberance is the limit in an anatomy description. That is the limit of the neck. So till there you call it as neck and above that you call it as scalp when you consider the regional anatomy perspective. So this region is called the occipital area. And this part is called the suboccipital area. So I'm going to the next layer where more uh, uh, of the superficial muscles in sternoculomastoid is shaved off. You can go to the next layer. Here the semispinal scapitus is cut open and on the right side you can see much more thinner muscles. This is the C2 spine. From the C2 spine you can see two muscles diverging. This is the rectus scapitus posterior major and this is the obliquus inferior and if I uh, dissect a little more if I go to the next layer you can see that you can see that triangle more clear, clearly this is the rectus capitis posterior major arising from the C2 spine towards the famous part of the occipital bone here you can see the obliquus inferior and here you can see the obliquus superior so this is called the suboccipital triangle the suboccipital triangle is more visualized if you rotate it you can see the suboccipital triangle more clearly here and you can see the Greater occipital nerve that was earlier piercing the semispinal scapitis is actually hooking below the inferior obliquus muscle. So, if I turn back to the dorsal view, you can see the two suboccipital triangles on both sides uh, of the midline here. And this muscle is the rectus capitis posterior minor. The only difference is this is C2 spine, this is C1 spine. So, this muscle take origin from the C1 spine. All these are attaching a lower part of the uh, so for squamous part of the occipital bone in specific regions. Here you need to know the point that here you have the external occipital protuberance and below that you have all these muscles. If I go to the next layer, the bone is uh, cut, nibbled off in this much area creating a window and through that window you can see the dura here. And here you can see a very important point. In this dura you can see a color difference over here in this much part. That is actually the underlying dural venous sinuses. You know that this part is the superior sagittal sinus and these are the transverse sinuses. So this plane is basically the attachment 
of the tentorium cerebelli and so this midline point will be the torcular herophily the, or the confluence of sinuses that means the superior sagittal sinus is going to turn to the right transverse sinus more commonly in people and the left transverse sinus is a continuation of the straight sinus because this point is basically the superior sagittal sinus coming like this and convert continuing as a transverse sin right transverse sinus the straight sinus comes like this and turns to the left transverse sinus so that is a torcular herophily and the torcular herophily is somewhat around the point of the external occipital protuberance usually the external occipital protuberance a little below the torcular will be a little more higher there are inter individual variations in the position of these but roughly you can know you can think that below the external occipital protuberance you have the infratentorial uh, compartment and above the external occipital protuberance you have the supratentorial compartment this idea is very important because uh, if, if i go to the next layer you will know its importance that in the supratentorial compartment, you can see the occipital lobes of the cerebrum and in the infratentorial compartment, you can see the cerebellum. And these are the transverse sinuses and this is the superior sagittal sinus uh, running in the upper part of the Fox cerebri and this is the torcular herophily. The, the tentorium is basically dividing the cranial compartment into two subsegments the uh, cerebr the supratentorial and the infratentorial compartments but from a superficial perspective you know that roughly it is below the external occipital protuberance and the superior nuchal line so anatomically the region that you consider as the upper part of the neck is actually uh, uh, superficial to the cerebellum so this is the uh, points that you need to know the, the about the suboccipital region and the upper part of the neck from the neurosurgical perspective as well as trauma perspective this region uh, has a lot of importance. Thank you.